This lesson is on EZ isomerism. Hopefully by the end of this video you should be able to describe the arrangement of the carbon-carbon double bond, define geometrical isomerism, draw and identify EZ isomers, and explain why EZ isomerization occurs. This alkene is ethene. The angle between the bonds is 120 and it forms this flat or planar structure. This diagram in orange shows a carbon with four orbitals around it. We say that it's been sp3 hybridized. Now you don't actually need to know about this terminology but it, it helps to understand it. In this one down here it's again showing a carbon but this is a carbon in an alkene. In the alkenes, you have three orbitals all going out 120 degrees around the carbon. You also have one electron existing in a p orbital tool above and below. So this blue is to represent just a single electron existing in this area. These diagrams over here show two carbons that are going to bond together to form an alkene. So we've got the central carbons, we've got the three uh, orbitals around it with 120 degrees and then we've got, at 90 degrees to them, we've got this p orbital. Okay, so what happens is these two green ones here, they overlap, and this forms our sigma bond here. So this is just a one single electron, single pair of electrons. The two p orbitals overlap and form a pi bond. The resulting diagram looks like this. Remember, you've got your two central carbons, you've got your sigma bond here, and then you've got the two overlapping p orbitals forming a pi bond. Now the pi bond isn't as strong as the sigma bond, so it's not like it's double the strength having a double bond. Now because of this double-double bond, we get this thing called geometrical isomerism. It only occurs in some types of alkenes, and it's all due to this thing called the restricted rotation of the carbon-carbon bond that we'll discuss in a minute. So you have two types um, of the isomer. You have E and Z. So this one down here, this is our Z isomer, and this is our E isomer. The Z stands for zusammen, which is the German word for together. So in this you can see that the green um, atoms here are both on the same side, they are together. Whereas uh, in this E version we can see that the green atoms are on opposite sides. We call this the E isomer, which stands for entgegen, which is for opposite. So let's discuss restricted rotation. So in alkanes, you just have single bonds. Now, this alkane and this alkane and this one, they're all exactly the same. They're not isomers of each other. Because the single bonds, they can all rotate. So this is just the same one, just rotated. It's really easy to visualize this if you make a little model using MollyMod and then you can twist it around, you can see that they can just twist around and they're still the same molecule. With alkenes, they can't rotate. If you remember, you've got your two uh, pi orbitals overlapping. So here are our pi orbitals and these overlap. When these p orbitals overlap, the electrons exist at a lower energy state. So for them to break, for them to be pulled apart, requires energy. So it doesn't like to do that, so it doesn't like to rotate. Unless, in unless of course, uh, you provide energy, in which is why electrophilic addition does occur. So if you look at these two um, isomers down here, this one is not the same as this one. These are actually different isomers. They're what's known as geometrical isomers, and again, this one is our Z form, and this one is our E form. So in previous past papers, they have asked for you to define what stereoisomers are. So stereoisomers are compounds with the same structural formula, but with atoms arranged differently in space. So one more time, Z is when the groups are on the same side, E is when they're on opposite sides, and um, the different isomers can have different physical properties, different boiling points, etc., if you think about this, right, if these are chlorine atoms, they're electronegative. So if they're both on this side, then this side will become slightly more negative compared to this side. Whereas this is sort of balanced out because you've got the negative here and a positive here, negative and here, positive here. So therefore, this will have more dipole-dipole interactions, therefore require more energy to break apart, therefore have a higher boiling point. Um, similar chemical properties, though, in most cases.
Go through some examples now, which is going to get progressively harder. You have to say if it's E or Z. So pause the video now and have a go. So the correct answer here, this is Z. When you're practicing at first E or Z, don't worry about naming the full thing, it'll just get confusing. But if you do want to know to check your answer, this is Z. One, two, dibromoethene. Okay, again, pause the video, have a go. So you should have come up with this one is E because the uh, groups are on opposite sides. This one's a little bit more confusing because we don't have the same thing. But uh, the way you do it, the trick is you look at the atom directly attached to the carbons and you look at on the periodic table and you find out their atomic number. So carbon has an atomic number of six, whereas hydrogen has an atomic number of one. And it's the one with the highest atomic number which gets the sort of priority. And so down here we have the same situation, one and six. So you can see that the, both the high priority ones are on the opposite side. So that's why it's E. This molecule would be called E. And then it's one, two, three, four, five. So pent two E. So this one's even more difficult. Have a go, pause the video. So to work out which ones have the high priority, you have to again use the periodic table. So we know that carbon's got a priority of six, uh, chlorine, I think it's 17, and bromine, bromine is 35, and hydrogen is one. So you can see that the, number, the highest numbers are on opposite sides, so this must be, again, E. Um, this one would be called E, one bromo, two chloro, propene. So pause the video, have a go. Right, this one um, doesn't actually show EZ isomerism. So one thing I need to mention is that to have EZ isomerism, you need different groups attached to each of the carbon. So this carbon, it's got two different, different groups attached, that's fine. But this carbon has two of the same thing. So if, if a carbon has two of the same thing attached, there is no EZ isomerism. Okay, this is getting really hard now, so pause the video, try this one. Okay, so let's assign some numbers. So this one's got an atomic number one, this carbon here has an atomic number six, this one's six, this one's six. Right, so it's very clear on this side, on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, which one gets priority? Well, what you do is you then look at what's attached to these two carbons. So this carbon is attached to three hydrogens. They've all got the highest um, atomic number is, is one. But this carbon is attached to an oxygen which has an atomic number of eight. So this one down here wins. So this takes priority. This one takes priority. So therefore they're together. So it is Z. You wouldn't need to name something this complex until A2, so don't worry about it. Okay, pause the video, have a go at this one. So let's assign some numbers. So if you notice, uh, it's all carbon. So this one's got six, this is six, this is six, this is six. So the first one doesn't help us. So what we do is we look along the chain. Okay, so this carbon is joined to two hydrogens and another carbon. So the highest is six. Whereas this one is joined to a chlorine, which is 17. So this one takes priority. Okay, let's have a look at the other side. This one, the highest is six. This one, the highest is uh, eight for oxygen. So this one takes priority, so this must be E.